Welcome to the 2019-2020 NBA Bold Predictions video. And yes, it says Bold Predictions. Now what does that mean? Bold. The definition of bold is something that is confident and courageous. Willingness to take a risk. And a prediction is a forecast. So this is a risky forecast, which means that my predictions in this video are not my actual predictions for the NBA season. For example, the MVP, the Rookie of the Year, who's going to be the first seed, who's going to win the NBA championship, all that kind of stuff will happen on this channel in the future. When the NBA season is creeping up on us, I will make that video. But today, this is my bold predictions video. So let's get into it. First of all, I just want to say a massive thank you to everybody on this channel watching right now and on this channel in general. You guys have shown so much support over the recent month and I just want to give you guys a massive, massive thanks. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button and let's see if we can reach a thousand likes for the next video tomorrow. And if you're new around here, hit that subscribe button. Anyway, just wanted to say a huge thank you for all the support. Let's get into the video. And before I get into the video, I just really want to touch up on one thing and it's related to my last video. You can skip this part, I'll put a timestamp in the description where you can skip to the actual video, but I want to get this off my chest because I got so many comments saying I was so biased in the last video, you're just upset that you didn't get Russell Westbrook. I'm really not. Russell Westbrook, of course, he's a great player, don't get me wrong, but the asking price that Oklahoma was trying to get for Russell Westbrook, they wanted Bam and Tyler Hero, and I would have much rather kept those two than get an aging Russell Westbrook on a huge contract. Yes, we know who the better team is. It's easily the Houston Rockets. The video was just an off-season ranking. They got Russell Westbrook. Is he a better player than Chris Paul? Yes. Is he a better fit than Chris Paul? I mean, that is debatable. They also got an aging Tyson Chandler and Anthony Bennett, who, I mean, hasn't really been in the league for many years and is a bust. And they lost Chris Paul and future first round picks. I was literally just ranking their off season and I gave them a C. It's really debatable. I don't think the Rockets got that much better this off season. If we're comparing teams, then yes, the Rockets are so much better than the Heat. They're a championship level team. That is not what the video was about. They didn't win, they didn't lose. They just stayed the same. That is how I rank them. And I do try to make this channel as unbiased as possible. And that was just my personal opinion. I believe the Westbrook is a better player, but the fit isn't as great. In saying that, who's the better team? Easily the Houston Rockets. But that wasn't what the video was about. Anyway, let's get onto the video. That was just a rant I had to get off my chest. Here are my bold predictions of the 2019-2020 NBA season. Number one, the Houston Rockets win 55 plus games and tie as the second seed in the Western Conference. This is a bold predictions video like I've stated a million times. And some people in the comment section, I can already see them writing, wow, you just saying that because you wanted to make up for what you said in the last video? Absolutely not. I believe that the Houston Rockets will be a good team. I just don't believe they did a whole lot in the offseason. I believe they've always been a great team. And I believe that they will win 55 games if Westbrook and Harden can work together as a duo and play well together. I think there is a huge chance for them to be as good as the Clippers or the Lakers and even better. Now, I don't see them getting the first seed and I'm going to come out with an NBA standings predictions in the future. But I do see them as a bold prediction tying for the second seed and to win 55 games in the Western Conference is very, very good. Only one team got 55 games in the West last season and that was the Warriors with Steph, Clay, Draymond and Durant. The next team was the Denver Nuggets with 54. So if the Rockets get 55 wins, that is a huge win for them and I believe that they can either tie the Lakers or the Clippers as the second seed in the Western Conference. Number two, Anthony Davis wins the MVP. Yeah, I said it's a bold predictions video. There's a lot of guys that definitely have a chance to win the MVP. There's an unwritten rule in the MVP case where you generally have to be a top player in the top three seed of either conference. For example, this season it was Giannis, he was the first seed in his conference. Last season, it was James Harden, first seed and best record in his conference. The year before that, it was Russell Westbrook, and he is the only exception in around 30 years where you have an MVP 
outside of the top three. And this was because he broke an NBA record by averaging a triple-double for a whole year since Oscar Robertson in the 1960s, which is why he got the MVP. But generally, it doesn't happen to any player who gets outside of a top three seed, as you have to have an historical season, which most players do not have, unless they do something insane. This is a seeding of the past MVPs, and it starts in 2014, as this is where the chart was made. The only player is Karl Malone and MJ who had the third seed in 1988. If you look at the guys in the Eastern Conference, Giannis is the guy that you think could have a definite chance to compete once again in the Eastern Conference and be a top three seed and most likely win it. But as this is a bold predictions video, it gives me the impression that let's choose a top three seed because that is generally what happens in the NBA. A player in a top three seed will win the MVP. If you look by conference, I believe the only player in the Eastern Conference that can win it is Giannis. But if it's not Giannis who gets a back-to-back -back MVP, very, very limited chance of Joel Embiid, because they are the 76ers who I believe will finish top three. And outside of that, I really don't know who else could win it that would finish top three in the Eastern Conference. In the West, it's a completely different story. You've got Stephen Curry, Kawhi Leonard, James Harden, Anthony Davis, LeBron James, Jokic, Paul George, Westbrook, all these guys have a chance to win the MVP, but you can only really choose someone who is going to finish as a top three seed in the Western Conference in my opinion. I believe it's going to be someone from either the Lakers, the Clippers, the Houston Rockets, or the Utah Jazz, as I believe that those are the teams that have a chance to be the top three seed in the Western Conference. And if we're being honest, LeBron James will probably have a few more rest days this season as he's getting a little bit older. And I believe that Kawhi Leonard will always have a little bit of rest management due to the injury that he sustained a few years ago. And I don't think that Stephen Curry will be a top three seed. And to be an MVP outside of the top three seed, you have to have an extreme season. And I believe that Stephen Curry will have an amazing season, but I don't think it's going to be extreme. Like Russell Westbrook being the first player to average a triple double since Oscar Robertson. I don't think he'll have that type of season. And I believe to me, if we're making a bold predictions video, if Anthony Davis plays the majority of this season healthy, which is obviously the big question, and he is still the best big man in the league, and the Lakers finish as the first or top three seed, I believe he has a very strong chance to win the MVP, as he's entering his prime, playing with arguably the greatest facilitator that the league has seen at that small forward position, plus Rondo, I believe Davis will be in the perfect position this season, and if he can stay healthy, has a great chance to win the MVP this season. But that is a bold prediction after all, because he is not my MVP candidate. I still think that Giannis can go back to back. At number three, and speaking of Giannis, the Bucks once again do not make the finals for the second straight year, even after having the best record in the league for back to back seasons. Which means that somebody else has to make the finals, and I believe it's the Philadelphia 76ers, and the Bucks will not. Now, it's not necessarily a bold prediction to say the 76ers will make the finals, but I believe it's more bold than to say that the Bucks will make it, as I believe that the Bucks will not make it for a second straight year. And that is my third bold prediction. My fourth bold prediction is that D'Angelo Russell averages 26 points per game with the Golden State Warriors before he gets traded. Now, D'Angelo Russell, I'm not going to predict when he gets traded or if he gets traded. I do believe that they probably won't keep him on a team with Stephen Curry and Klay Thompson. I just don't see that fit working out. You're either going to have to run Klay Thompson at the three or you're going to have to trade D'Angelo Russell in my opinion. And I think there's a higher chance that they trade D'Angelo Russell and get a better fit at the small forward position if they get Klay Thompson back and he's healthy. And honestly, I believe it's a very bold prediction to say that D'Angelo Russell will average 26 points per game. Klay Thompson has never averaged over 22. Only a few players last season averaged 26 points per game or higher. And those were Kevin Durant, who averaged 26 with the Warriors, Kawhi Leonard, who averaged 26.6, Booker, who averaged 26.6 with literally nobody else on his team. Stephen Curry, who averaged 27.3. Embiid, who averaged 27.5. Giannis, who was the MVP, who averaged 27.7. Paul George, who averaged 28. And obviously Harden, who averaged 36 points per game. I believe that is a bold prediction, but I don't think it's out of this world. D'Angelo Russell averaged 21 points last season. So I believe if he can average one more three-pointer and two more free throws, 
he will average 26 points per game. And I don't think it's out of this world, but I do think it is a bold prediction because averaging 26 points per game is elite in the NBA. Those are the best scorers that the league has. And at this point, D'Angelo Russell is not that because he's behind Drew Holiday, Doncic, DeRozan, Aldridge, Randall, Thompson, Westbrook, Levine, Mitchell, and I could keep going on. But I believe he will take that next step offensively with the Golden State Warriors. Number five, Ben Simmons will hit a three-point shot. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> but honestly, I think that this year he will actually start shooting three-pointers. And a bold prediction is that he shoots 35% of 100 three-point attempts per game, which is actually very, very bold now that I think of it. Because Kevin Durant and Bradley Bill both shot 35% this season. And they are two of the league's best shooters. So let me lower that actually to 32%, which is still pretty high, but it is a bold predictions video. So let's just see if it happens. It's just a bold predictions video, guys. You don't need to get all crazy on me. At this point, even if he just makes one three at 25%, the Philadelphia 76ers and the NBA world will probably go crazy. But I believe that he will start shooting a little bit more this season. And I think the 76ers need that. So I believe if he has 100 three-point shot attempts this season and he shoots around 33%, I believe it's not out of this world, but at the same time, for a guy that really never shoots, it is a pretty bold prediction. At number six, and this is bold, Anthony Bennett will become a solo contributor and actually finds a proper roster spot in the NBA. As we all know, Anthony Bennett is one of the biggest busts in NBA history, if not the biggest bust in NBA history. He's been in and out of the league, joining the Nets, the Raptors, and all these other teams, but he's mainly played in the G League. And in the last two seasons, he's played with the G League team for the Arizona Suns and the Clippers of the NBA G League. And he hasn't done a whole lot in the G League, but he has shown signs of improvement. Obviously, he's a bit more mature this time. He's 26 years old, which is reaching the prime of an NBA career, but this is a different situation. So for him to reach his prime, well, that is not something that he's going to look for. He would just like to be on an NBA team, having a few minutes and earning some solid cash because he really hasn't had any luck in the last few seasons. But last season with the Clippers in the G League, he averaged 25 games, seven starts, and he posted averages of 12.2 points and 4.5 rebounds while shooting 54.6 from the field and 45% from beyond the arc. Now, 45% from beyond the arc is actually not bad for a big man at the power forward position. Not to mention, he had a breakout game last season in 2018, November 30th, where he erupted for 36 points, shooting 12 for 13 from the field and 8 for 9 beyond the arc. He also grabbed 6 rebounds during that game. This is a guy that I believe will just grow into his own, have a little bit more confidence, and with the addition of Russell Westbrook joining the Houston Rockets, it really means that a lot of people won't talk about Anthony Bennett as much, because they're going to be focused on how Westbrook and Harden play together, and people will just forget about Anthony Bennett even being on the roster, which probably will give him some peace of mind if he doesn't have the best game. And I believe he will actually come back to the league, and he will finish out his career in the NBA, and not get waived. Not being a good player, or even average, but just being a guy that can finish out his career in the NBA. At number 7, the media and the people on social media will actually turn against Michael Jordan, as the Hornets have one of the worst records in the league, if not the worst record in the league for next season, and people will start to blame Jordan for his continuous lack of building a team and his poor choice in hiring good staff to surround the Hornets. We all know that MJ, as an owner and as a general manager for the Wizards, has been absolutely shocking. Drafting Kwame Brown, not trading Kemba for an asset, getting Rozier for a huge amount of money. Yes, you can always blame the GM that Jordan hired, but at the end of the day, Jordan has made some very questionable moves, and I believe that because the Hornets, in my opinion, will be the worst team in the NBA, I believe a lot of the blame and a lot of media will turn on Jordan. Even though the NBA and the media loves Jordan, I believe there will be a little bit of a narrative change where everybody starts to realize that Jordan is actually making the NBA and the Hornets in a worse place. But maybe I'm just saying this and maybe everybody will just continue to love MJ because that's how it's been ever since he entered the league. But in my opinion, I believe as a player, he's the greatest. As an owner and as a GM, he is arguably the worst I have ever seen. And I believe that because the Hornets will not be very good this season, this is the season that everybody will look to MJ and be like, what the hell are you doing? 
At number eight, Zion Williamson does not win the Rookie of the Year. Yes, once again, it is a bold predictions video. Who do I have winning the MVP and the Rookie of the Year? I have Giannis and I have Zion Williamson. But at the same time, if this is a bold predictions video, let's say somebody else. First of all, Zion Williamson has a higher chance to get an injury than any player in the 2019 NBA Draft besides probably Taco Fall and Bol Bol. But Zion Williamson's weight and health is going to be an issue throughout his playing career because playing under that amount of weight and being that athletic isn't a normal thing. In saying that, he's a freak, so I don't put it past him. The second thing is, he's already on a team with talent. Lonzo Ball, Brandon Ingram, JJ Redick, Drew Holiday. These are guys that are going to take shots off Zion Williamson, which means he will have less of a role than a guy like RJ Barrett on the New York Knicks, who will have majority of the offense run through him, as well as other players on that team, but majority of it will be run through RJ Barrett. Which is why I'm saying that RJ, as a bold prediction, will win the Rookie of the Year. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to smash that like button for tomorrow's video. If you're new around here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. That would be greatly appreciated. Turn on notifications so you don't miss an upload. And follow me on Instagram so you can see what I get up to in my day-to-day -day life. And also, let me know your bold predictions for this upcoming season. And with that said, I am out. Take it easy. Peace.